Hello, YouTube. I think this is going to be a at least a two-parter. Um, I got a lot to say. I've, uh, as a kid, uh, sitting in the back pew, uh, ignoring everything, uh, I didn't really understand what was going on. I just knew about hell and that God was in the sky watching me. That's all I really understood. I probably till around the age of eight or nine, I started to started to really, I started to get the story. And when I finally really understood what it was about, this uh, about how Jesus had died for my sins, I had a, a different reaction than other people did. Uh, and I knew right away that it was wrong of me to have a reaction like this. Um, I was disappointed. I thought Jesus was going to be like a superhero, you know, like Superman, or that he'd have superhuman strength because he could do miracles and that he'd have all these special powers, uh, like an X-Men or something, uh, or a vampire. <laughs> uh, powers, because he had did miracles. And to see him go meekly to his death, it never, it never rang true with me. As when I started to, when I heard the story, when I understood, when I the whole passion story, and they were like all shook up over it, and I was like going, "This is lame. This guy's got superpowers. You try driving nails through Superman's hands." See how far you get. I, you know, as a kid, I'm just trying to explain a little bit about the process that led to, you know, the person I am now. I'm like you care, but I want to say this, so listen if you want. I was disappointed in Jesus. Is that bizarre? That's a kid. I remember thinking that. And at the time, well, it was since the age of probably even six, maybe seven. Uh, I was in love with dinosaurs. <laughs> and volcanoes erupting. That just I love that stuff. And then I I also like, you know, my, my funny books, you know, which I know my grandparents frowned upon, although you know, the hell with it. I mean they like the nice ones, Archie and stuff, you know, but I like the superheroes and scary books, uh, and I used to go to the house next door and visit these people and read those. So Jesus didn't really, as a superhero, Jesus really didn't measure up to me. And that he just went up there and died. And also before Pilate, they talked about how brave he was that he said so little. And I thought every time I've ever been in trouble, that's the way I acted. My dad scared the crap out of me. He was a grand inquisitioner. He answered. He asked all the questions. It was his job to ask the questions that you must answer. With probably my first problem with God was he was a father figure, and as much as I love my dad now, and he's a very different person, just like I am. Uh, and my grandfather uh, was. He became a much nicer guy. But I remember I used to kick the crap out of my Uncle David, who was the only other infidel in the family. Uh, as a matter of fact, he was the one who actually suggested, he told me he didn't believe in God when I was uh, nine. It blew my mind. Because I had to go to church. I was getting in that, I had to button that top button and put a tie on. And I, and they always choked me. I was always being constricted by it. And I didn't want to go. And I had to be all perfect and clean, you know, and bathe, you know, when I was a kid, you know. I was like, oh, God, i got to take a bath. Great. Baptism every Sunday, you know. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't want to go there. And my Uncle David was visiting. And he was, like, the coolest guy. You know, he was the only uncle I had, you know, my, my mom's younger brother. And he was just such a cool guy. He was sort of a role model for me in a way, and he still is. I, I visited him recently, and boy, is he an atheist. Boy, oh boy, is he an atheist. The only one. Well, my grandfather used to beat the shit out of him to get God into him. He was he used to have a weight problem. He's like tall and skinny now, but he used to be fat. And they made him live in a barn. 
in back because they didn't want him in a house with his four sisters because they were weird. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, he told me some interesting stories, but anyway, I'm getting off this subject. Uh, I was disappointed in Jesus. I thought that he was going to like do some kind of superhero thing. And he wasn't much he wasn't my idea of a hero. And you know, uh I started really wondering about like I said his his taciturnness about uh when he was being questioned. You know, are you the king of the Jews? He said so. I mean, so I could read it a different way. I mean, you know, everybody makes it all dramatic, and he's so brave. I'm thinking, wait a minute, why don't you just, why don't you speak your mind, mister? You know, what's wrong? Cat got your tongue? I, I start coming up with some other weird conspiracy ideas, and I want to share one with you, but I'm going to do it in another video, which is, I'll, I'll post with this one. Uh, I'm just telling you where my mind was coming from, and I started... I do have, my Uncle David was like an atheist, but he was a UFO freak. So, I don't know, atheists are strange, strange creatures anyway, you know? <laughs> you know, we're all individuals. It's like, we're all, you know, theists are dogs. They like to be together. They like to be in a pack and think alike. And atheists are more like, free thinkers are free thinkers. They're like cats. They, you know, try herding cats sometime, you know? Try training a cat. You know, yeah, you can do it, maybe, sometimes, you know. Ask Sigma, Siegfried and Royd, you know. You got Roy. <laughs> <It's a> Roy. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to shut up now. Um, I've had a few drinks, sorry. Um, I want to talk about this conspiracy theory. Because I'm wondering if maybe Jesus had something up his sleeve. Anyway, um... To be continued.